Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of TV Junkie Generation. In honor of my TV love, I wore my Misfits from Gem and the Hologram shirt. We all love those Misfits. This is going to be my early review of the second season of Helix. As most of you know, Helix, the first season, was one of my favorite shows, and I kept telling everyone to watch it, and I'm so glad that they did. Um, in this season, the cast luckily escaped from this horrifying uh, Arctic biosystem and, and all the creatures, as you can see right here. But now they have to investigate a possible outbreak of another virus that they don't know. And they're also looking for the Alaria compound, which is the one who started it all. So there's a lot of missions going on here. And they end up in St. Germain, which seems too nice for me. And I think it might be like cannibals, cults, or something like that. Um, all your regular players are back. Julia's back with those silver eyes. As you can, look at the silver eyes. I kind of like them. I kind of like them. All right, so here's another pro. So that's, we have what, three pros. Okay. You don't need to be a Helix fan to jump into season two. There is a lot of callbacks to what happened in season one. But there's new characters and storylines and people. It feels like a whole new show. As you can see here, there's new characters, new places to go. You know, and it's, it's easy to come back into it if you haven't seen it at all. All right, they have a brand new virus to deal with. <sighs> it, instead of that black goo that used to come out of their mouth, it's now this, like, gross, pussy, yellow stuff. As you can see right here is one of the victims. Sorry, girl. Um, Neil Naper is back as Peter, which I loved. Lucky for him, he spent, well, unlucky for him, he spent the whole first season in, you know, a hospital chair because he was infected. And the second season, I can tell you, he is alive and doing stuff. So I'm so glad to see that change in him. Um, as you can see, look right here, the difference between him in season one and him in season two. So I think that um, I like that. I want to see a different side of him. He's now the uh, uh, runs the CDC response team, which is great. And pro, another pro, there's a massive, massive, massive twist coming that's going to change everything. All right, let's get into the cons. There's really not that many. Um, one con is that there's so many storylines going on and so many people in so many different places. It can get a little bit confusing, but um, just take your time, rewind if you have to, because they're all pertinent to the plot and the storyline of Helix. That's one con. Uh, the second con is really not a con, it's just a personal bitch. Um, I kind of liked it when they were in the Arctic lab. I'm claustrophobic, and I like that it freaked me out so much. So uh, I like that's just a personal thing. I don't even know if you could call it a con, you know. So look it. I'm gonna kick your ass if you don't watch Helix season two, which premieres January 16th at 10 p.m. on Sci-Fi. My final review is nine hair flips. No! That means you gotta watch Helix. Get on season two, January 16th, 10 p.m. Sci fi. All right, that's another episode of TV Junkie Generation. I'll see you next time.